what happens in seekers life where they are seeking for almost like entire half of their lifetime and at one one fine day they they start seeking so what goes through that that mind or what make them just forget everything it's a very interesting question because it's also something which one sees in many spiritual traditions seekers not just seekers they're also finders they find a lot along the way they find themselves they get closer to themselves or they get closer to enlightenment whichever is the path that they are seeking in our case here enlightenment is not the goal it's about self realization about being present here and now and tuning inward and getting closer and closer to the source so on such a journey also you will have that situation where people decide that they don't want to continue on that path and what it generally is is that the ego the ahankar takes the upper hand when people start out on a spiritual path they do that because either they want to have power over others that's a motivation or they're just fascinated by the idea of knowing what this life is about this truth is about knowing themselves or they take up a spiritual path because life is just too painful for them and they want to find a way to get out of it so for those that are interested or have that love for the truth intrinsically they generally don't leave the journey or move away from themselves they don't normally do that but those that have taken up a spiritual path because they wanted to escape the pain or because they wanted to dominate others or have power over others generally are the ones who would then at one point move out of that process leave behind that process because what happens is that as they move more and more towards the self and start acting more and more from the truth they also become more and more joyous and more and more strong but on the other hand the ego becomes more and more devious it becomes more and more clever and will try to outsmart which is why it's very important for a true spiritual seeker to have someone that has the courage to point out to them when they allow the ego to take over but what happens then is because they have gathered a lot of shakti a lot of force spiritual force they start to believe that they are actually able to live life without listening to the truth anymore it's the ego that has taken over and it's so subtle and it comes in such subtle ways and it takes over and by the time the person even realizes what has happened they've already lost all the shakti that they have gathered over a period of spiritual endeavor that force that strength that they have is lost so when that strength is not there the ego has already made its inroads it will just keep growing and growing and growing and so obviously they are not going to want to continue with the practices that have actually led them to that state of power also what happens is especially when there is a spiritual master involved the master has to point out to the disciple what is standing in the way to themselves so the stronger the disciple becomes the more devious the ego and so of course the propensity not to listen to the truth within themselves or to the truth coming from their teacher but to go with the ego and that's what happens especially in the case of people who start out on a spiritual journey somewhere because they want to have power over others those are the most dangerous motivations and they will always result in a mess those are some of the pitfalls which have to be avoided 
one has to be very careful, one has to be alert, one has to be acutely alert. Because if that happens and you fall off from that from that track or you slip off that track, it's very, very hard to get back on. It's more hard than it could have been before. Because the ego just won't let you. And people like that, they say and do such stupid things, one wouldn't believe that it's possible. That very same person who maybe a day ago did this, does something totally contraproductive and self-harming, you know. Because it's the ego, the ego is very subtle. The more, the more Shakti you have, the more power you have, you know, Jathar Agni, the, 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 the Agni, the fire of knowledge, the fire that has come from Tapas, from the practices, the more that fire is gathered together, the faster it releases if you make a mistake. And the mistake is that you don't go with the Truth, that you prefer to go with the ego lie. And when you go with the ego lie, the result we know already, that it's over, it's game up. It's like in snakes and ladders. But that snake swallows you down and then you have to make your way up again. And not always are those ladders there which were there when you started playing the game. So it's very dangerous actually. And that is why they advise to do seva, spiritual service, adhyatmic seva, spiritual service. For a spiritual seeker who wants to know the Truth of this life and wants to experience it and live it, it's indispensable, Adhyatmik Seva, it's indispensable, it's not a question, you have to do it. And it's very painful and boring and irritating and you don't want to do it and you'd rather go and watch a movie. Yes, I understand all of that. But that's the fee you pay into life to receive the, the nectar of Truth. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I had a follow-up question. So, yes. what happens when Seeker has fallen down and that negative circle and that spiral they have reached at the bottom of that pit. What lies ahead? Generally, what would happen if a seeker gives in to the ego and stops the practices or doesn't tune in anymore to the Truth and really act from that Truth, the fall is into suffering, actually. It's into physical suffering, it's into emotional suffering, it's into conceptual suffering, it's suffering all over. That energy and that Jatharagni and that force and that Shakti that has been built up, it has suddenly left the system. So obviously the entire system is weakened drastically. It's a material thing, it's an energetic material thing. It's not about, I like this, I don't like this, I like this person, I don't like person, no. It's about the energy that has left the system suddenly, which had been gathered over years of practice, sometimes decades of practice. And when that happens, the entire system is left vulnerable. So it will be, it will be taken over. And there will be suffering in the process. And why that is because as a person, as a seeker goes on a spiritual journey towards themselves, they build up this force. And because they have that force within themselves, they're also able to attract and increase their prosperity, physical health, emotional strength, conceptual precision, transformative ability, all of that grows, but it's based on the foundation of surrender to the Truth, being an instrument of the Truth. 
So all those gains that come, they come because one is in that surrender state to the truth within and refusing the ego lies demands and, and insistences and wantings and willings and hopings and yearnings and pushings and all of that, desirings. The moment you stop listening to the truth, all that energy goes away that you have built up. You can't just give in to the ego and then expect that everything is nicely going to be in place. No. It's like you've replaced the foundation with something else. And so everything crumbles. And that other thing starts to determine what you're going to experience in this life, you know. So there is suffering. There cannot be joy. There will not be. There is no way. There just cannot be. Because sometimes seekers think, Oh, now I've learned this much. Now I know what I have to do. That's the ego. Immediately you can know that that's the ego speaking. Because you only know what you have to do if you tune into the Truth. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. It knows. I am in surrender to that. This, this, this is in surrender to that. And when this stops being in surrender to that, then this faces life, because this is not anymore an instrument of that, of the Truth, but has become an instrument of the ego. And then it comes, and it comes fast. So, it's a decision if a person wants to just go through life without actual, conscious, transformative process, or they want to take up a transformative process. But if you take up that process, then you've taken it up. You can't just expect to stay with all the energy of that process, but not continue the process. It's like if you pile up money in a bank and then you just write a check, a blank check to your enemy, they will just take all that money out. There's no way that you can say, well, you know, I have that money in the bank, now I can deal with the enemy and nothing will happen. Even if you don't write that check, the enemy will fish the checkbook out of your bag and write a check to themselves. That's how it works. So, it is a decision which has to be taken seriously and taken for life, you know. It's not a joke. Knowing Self, and especially when you've had the experience of that impulse of Source or Soul, Self-realization, you better respect that experience and hold on to it. It's not going to hold on to you. You hold on to it, in surrender, in humility, bending down, always in surrender, surrender, surrender. I am the instrument of the Soul, I am Yours, I am Yours, I am Yours. Not your girlfriends, or your mother, or your Prime Minister, no! It's the Soul, the Source. You belong only to that. You don't belong to a family, you don't belong to a country, you don't belong to a nation, you don't belong to anyone or anything, you don't belong to moralities and ideas and and religions and systems, you belong to that Source. And if you mess up there, then of course, the bank account gets emptied out and you have to build it up again. And it's not as easy, because you don't have the tools anymore, because you've lost the energy. You have to find the tools again, and you have to build it up again. That's why it's so important to hold to the Truth. And when seekers have practiced for many years, suddenly they start to get this feeling that they know what's going on, and they, they understand everything. They don't. They only know what's going on when they're in touch with the Truth within themselves. If they're not in touch with that, it's not going to happen. And often, what happens is that they feel that they are in touch with the Truth, because they don't want to go with what their own Truth is telling them. They don't want to go with it, so they create a Truth which is actually a face of falsehood. 
it's a very delicate thing, it's a very... it's walking a tight rope. You have to stay on that rope. And you stay on that rope if you hold on to the Truth. If you keep your sights in front of you, and you balance, then, then you can move forward. Yes. Yes, ma'am.